excellent that you're here because we're going to talk about inverse functions. This is part one um, out of five parts in total. Um, so I'm going to explain from the start inverse functions. You're always going to get questions about it, and it's not difficult. Let's say we have the function of f(x) uh, where x is the variable of uh, what shall we do? Let's do 3x plus 5. Yeah, it's a linear function. If you would draw it, if you would graph it, it is a line. Anyway, and then the the question is, well, what is then the inverse function of x? Yeah, so that is the question. And that's the notation, yeah, f to the power minus 1 of x, which means the inverse function of x. All right, now I'm going to show you two methods. Um, the first method is you're interchanging x and y. I'm going to show you in a minute what that means. But let me just call that now swapping x and y. And the other method you can use is by making some sort of flow diagram. Okay, now personally, I always use the first method, yeah, but I'd like to show you both anyway because they'll both work. Okay, now, fx equals 3x plus 5, yeah, and I have to find the inverse. And I'm going to do that by interchanging x and y. Now, what does that mean? Rather than fx, now I'm going to write it again in the classic. Uh, notation, let's put it that way, y equals 3x plus 5. Okay, so rather than fx, I'm going to put there a y now. Now, to find the inverse, I'm going to swap x and y. So, it's going to become then x equals 3y plus 5. Yeah, so first of all, I have to swap. And then the second thing we have to do is we have to make y the subject again. So it says y equals, yeah, 1y equals, and then the rest. So make y the subject. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, first then I have to move the 5 to the other side. Yeah? So I am, let me just write that down here. I'm taking away the 5 here. Got to take away 5 there to make it equal, so x minus 5 equals 3y and then I am going to divide both sides by 3 yeah so it's going to be x minus 5 and the whole thing divided by 3 equals y okay and the inverse function therefore the inverse function is x minus 5 over 3 okay so this is the strategy I personally use. It doesn't mean it's better than the other one I'm going to show you in a minute. But fx becomes y equals 3x plus 5. I swap x and y. Yeah, so x equals 3y plus 5. And then I make y the subject of that equation. Yeah, by rearranging it, by manipulating it. x minus 5 divided by 3. Yeah, so the inverse function of f where x is the variable is x minus 5 over 3. Okay, so let's remember that answer uh, because I said, yeah, okay, swap x and y, but the other strategy is to make a flow diagram. Okay, so we're going to show you that one now. Um, and I'm going to write down the function again. Oh, there we go. So fx, I have to keep, what did I say? 3x plus 5. Okay, and we have to find the inverse plus 5. Now, what is the flow diagram? You start with x, and yeah, you have an x. And what is the first thing, yeah, if you look at, if you think about bot mass, yeah, what is the first thing they do with x? Yeah. Well, indeed, the first thing they do is they times it by three. Do you agree? Times by three. And what do I get when I times x by three? Indeed, I get three x. Now, what is the second thing, yeah, in terms of bot mass, they do with x, yeah, with that particular value then? Indeed, the, the second thing they do is adding it to 5, uh, or adding 5 to it. And then we have the function 3x plus 5. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so first it times by 3, then they add it by 5. And now, to find the inverse, well, I'm doing it exactly in opposite direction. So I'm going to put in x and rather than plus 5, what is the inverse operation? What is the opposite thing of plusing it by 5? Yeah, because we're finding the inverse. Plusing it by 5, the opposite is minusing it by 5. Okay, 
Now what do I have then if I put in x here and I minus it by 5, I have x minus 5. Okay? And then the inverse, what is the opposite of timesing it by 3? What is the opposite operation? That indeed is dividing it by 3. So divide x minus 5 by 3. So the inverse function of x equals x minus 5 over 3. So again, the flow diagram or the flow chart you make, you look at your function, you put in x, they multiply it by 3, then they add 5 to get 3x plus 5. To find the inverse, you put in x on the other side and you do the inverse operation. Minus it by 5, x minus 5, dividing it by 3, x minus 5 over 3. And as you can see, that is the exact same answer, of course, that's the beauty of maths, yeah, as if you would have swapped x and y and made y the subject. So I'd like you now to basically try both methods in the next uh, few videos and decide for yourself the one you prefer, okay? Because they're both equally as good and equally as useful, all right? So I'll see you at the next part.